can no longer save the world by playing by the rules. Now we all have a choice. We can create transformational action and it has to start today. In the beginning, I wanted to um, just acknowledge everyone who's contributed to this amazing exhibition. And it's been, uh, it's presented and organized by Nirvana Creative Production House. All the digital experiences that you see uh, have been made by Sharpend. Uh, it's, the whole exhibition is kindly host, hosted by G.F. Smith. And uh, the branding and the font has been uh, made by Alistair Gibbs. Um, so just... Um, a bit, a bit of catch up what's happening tonight. I'm going to uh, start by giving the context to the entire exhibition and give you uh, a brief background, like how we see colors, materials, and finishes. And then uh, Sha Sha just Sean will be, be, oh, yeah. will be talking with, uh, today um, about uh, plastic-free certification, plastic-free materials. And then Gary will discuss uh, and demystify compostable plastics. And then uh, Julian will disca discuss sustainable material strategies. So without further ado, um, my name is uh, Katie, uh, and I work for Nirvana Creative Production House. Uh, my background is in product design, and I specialize in colors, materials, and finishes. Um, other thing that I do, just to keep myself more busy, is I'm doing PhD at the Royal College of Art, uh, <laughs> where I explore how we can use CMF for experiences, but also for circular economy. And at Nirvana, I lead anything to do with materials and insights. And at the department, we focus on, as I said, colors, materials, and finishes, because these three elements will directly translate into the biggest environmental footprint that your product or experience, whatever you're making, will make. So being part of sustainable revolution, these three elements in the creative industry are the key sources of making sure that we pave a way for a sustainable future. And how can we decide which color material and finish is sustainable is through its life cycle. And the simplest way to understand anything and everything to do with color material and finish is to understand where, what's the raw material, where is it coming from, how is it being produced and, and made, how is it being used, and how, how it can be disposed. And the last bit, the disposal, is very often overlooked when it comes to the design process. So it's key for sustainable future to start including that. And once we begin to understand the, the life cycle of these three elements, we can then understand, OK, does it, is it linear? Is it mixed loop? Or is it circular? Linear could be a sneaker. It's made out of many materials, um, sometimes 20, sometimes 30, sometimes 40. God knows how many, but many. And it's very, very challenging to separate all these materials. That, therefore, it has a beginning of life and end. Um, mixed loop material is best exemplified by, for instance, a plastic bottle, which can become a fabric insulation and then have energy, go into energy recovery. True circular materials are, for instance, glass or aluminum, because these materials don't lose any of their material properties or their material integrity during the recycling process. Therefore, they can be remade and remade into the same thing all over again. So understanding these basic bits of information leads us to understanding the key terminology that is floating out there these days and it's floating and it's floating and there's plenty of it and not many people actually understand w what it all means so for you as a designer um, someone who works within the marketing department whatever, wherever you, you might be, be situated in the creative industry once you understand the life cycle you begin to understand what kind of story you can present and know-how in all of that is key because once you start get digging, one of the things that you begin to understand is that biodegradable waste, for instance, will be banned from Scottish landfills on January 1st, 2021. So it is very important to be able to differentiate what's biodegradable, what's compostable, and what are the materials that you want to use. Um, and why do we tell stories about the colors, materials, and finishes. Simply so because humans think in stories rather than facts and figures. And the simpler the story, the better. Every person, group, and nation has its own tales and myths, and it's been based and built 
upon that. So we cannot create something without, which is very complex. And if it's complex, let's break it down and create something that's a positive, sustainable story. Because these days, you know, lots of negative, um, lots of negative articles about plastics and, and sustainability and packaging, etc. But the fact is, we can all turn that into a positive, and therefore we can create action. If we're overwhelmed with negative information, we do not know how to act. So once we begin to understand everything when it comes to life cycle, terminology, etc., we can begin to build stories of recycle, reuse, and reduce. We can recycle for properties, reuse for function, reduce energy, weight, water, etc. And some of the companies are beginning to pioneer in that. Great example is L'Oreal, who's using their pre-consumer facing packaging to make their own paper that then is turned into their premium packaging um, in the retail spaces. Loop reusing the, 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 the re mastering in refillable packaging of everyday goods. Reduce, reducing the, the, the amount of plastics that, that are being used and creating paper-based outer shell packaging. Um, mastering in doing uh, a sneaker out of mono material rather than 20 or 30 different materials that I've initially discussed. Uh, reusing waste into something that in, in, in new products that it's never been used in before. Reducing amount of water. Water is the most precious resource that we have out there and it's so often being overlooked in both the media stories but also in the way how we design. Amount of water is very limited Without scaring anyone, United Nations is saying by 2050, half of global population might not have enough drinkable water on daily basis. Therefore, it's key. And that's why, for instance, Zara is pioneering and showcasing, leading the way, paving the way, how to, how to reduce the amount of water in, 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 in um, making textiles on this occasion. So... The key in all of that that I'm saying is that sustainability cannot be designed backwards. So you cannot have a project that's beautiful and, and aesthetically designed with that, which is sustainable without adding that sustainability and mindfulness for the colors that you want to use, materials that you want to use, and finishes that you want to use if, if you haven't thought of it from the very beginning. So this, that's why this exhibition is showcasing how you can transform different negative information like for instance, you know, glass using a lot of energy, using a, being very heavy to, to carry on the tracks, etc. The milkman had it right. It's showcasing how he himself in the 70s and 80s is contradicting certain facts that, were, that are being used these days. Aluminium, 70% of aluminium ever made remains in use today. Amazing figure. Uh, cotton does consume a lot of water, but how can we do it? How can, when we're using it, how can we shape our business around using um, that material, maybe not to that, the extent that we're using it, but for instance, just accessorizing the jeans rather than creating new pair of jeans. Um, paper cap, something that had no value and now has value because there is a system infrastructure to recycle it into paper, plastic packaging, do we need that many materials? The answer is, is no. Can we, if we really need to use plastic, can we just use one material rather than more? And if we're using this one, let's give mindful information how to recycle it. So I just wanted to acknowledge, because this is our closing night, so thank you for being here. It's, it's, it's super special. Um, so these were all of the different talks that we had. So. Um, if you want to find out more about sustainable production, innovation, and today we have materials, so you'll find out, but on about these two, do, do catch me at the end. I'm happy to talk you through what's happened and give you all the different insights. And now, yeah, we're open until Friday, so do spread the word and let's bring more people in. Now I'm gonna head over to Sean, so thank you.